Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Uh, this is going to be a response to um, Alex, um, Matork247, I believe is the username. Um, kind of a, a new, well not a new VC member, I think he's been around for a little while now, but I just kind of discovered his channel where I saw someone else that had done a response to his 200 subs contest. And I kind of, you know, followed it back to the original video and discovered Alex's channel and subbed and wanted to kind of jump on board and do a response because he had a kind of a simple but really cool question. So I thought, hey, sounds like a fun one. So just kind of jumped on board. But uh, yeah, man, congratulations on the 200 subs. I saw a second ago, it looked like you were already over 300. So, you know, blown by that before the contest even ended. <laughs> but uh yeah, he's a you know big jazz guy, and basically the question was, uh, like your five, five of your favorite non Coltrane jazz albums, uh, which is kind of a you know good thing to put the non Coltrane thing in there because pretty much, you know Coltrane is my guy. I probably have just almost as much Colt, well, but definitely a lot of Coltrane in my collection, and, and definitely my favorite artist. You know, with Love Supreme being my favorite jazz album of all time. But so uh, taking Coltrane out of the picture, uh, this is kind of what I came up with. I also saw a couple other videos and even in his own, you know, you, you pulled out that Alice Coltrane album, which was, as I kind of mentioned in my comments, was going to be one of my picks. So I thought, well, let me kind of come up with something else. And and um, yeah, so I basically pulled out like five LPs and then just two little two CDs I wanted to show just because if we start talking kind of desert island these are those would be two things that I would definitely love to have as well and I don't think they don't have either one of these on vinyl but uh, I just kind of show those two bonus extras there but let's just kind of jump right into it I will start off here with uh, Andrew Hill and this is point of departure and in my in my jazz discovery slash growth over the years, uh, Hill is actually one of the artists that I've discovered a bit later. So, you know, to me at least, he's still kind of fresh and new to me because I wasn't listening to him 10, 15 years ago. But, um, you know, this right here is just a fantastic album from start to finish. And, I don't know, it's kind of, it's kind of always odd for me to say that with a lot of this Blue Note stuff because, you know, really just kind of with the way things were back then, you know, artists weren't in a bunch of different places making different music on different labels and everything. So, you know, pretty much any Blue Note record you look at, you know, you're going to see, oh, this is Andrew Hill's album with Eric Dolphy, with Kenny Dorham, with Joe Henderson. It's like, you know, the same nine or ten guys on every single album just killing it. So no wonder they're all freaking fantastic. But, uh this is definitely one of my favorites here. I mean, this is just kind of from start to finish, uh, just a very beautiful and energetic album to listen to. I, I just really, really like it a lot. So that'd definitely be one of my favorites there. Um, you know, another one I kind of skipped out on because I think it's kind of a given was, um, you know, Bitches Brew by Miles Davis. I definitely love that album to death. But um, my, my it's probably my second favorite jazz artist overall next to... Uh, Coltrane would be Ornette Coleman. Definitely love him a lot. And of course, you know, a lot of great albums there. Uh, but I'm going to go with Twins by Ornette Coleman. And the way I like to kind of describe this album is um, if any of you guys ever used to watch the old, you know, Kung Fu theaters, which were awesome. Um, you know, there was always, there was a few of them out there. There were classics that were like, you know, the Drunken Master or whatever it was some guy who would just drink himself till he couldn't stand up but then you know his kung fu skills were incredible and you couldn't kick his butt while he was drunk or he fought better when he was drunk <laughs> i i kind of get that same feel off of this album every time i listen to it it's not you know it's nowhere near free jazz or anything like that because i do love free jazz but it's more so like you kind of get this this swaggy almost stank off of Ornette's playing where it sounds like he might have been a little bit drunk he's kind of slurring you know a little bit in the way that he's playing and that there's just something about it that I just really really like and I always get that impression from it when I hear it that it's just kind of raw lazy halfway asleep a little tipsy and it just it just brings out a really really good feel to me 
So, uh, Ornette Coleman Twins would definitely be one on my list. This is an artist that I've known about forever and probably in the last couple of years, if you've caught videos where I've talked about him, has really grown on me a lot. Uh, and that's Wynton Marcellus. And this is the self-titled here. And uh, yeah, this is just a fantastic jazz album from, from start to finish. Uh, the thing I really like about it is not only is it, is it just good, but there's just so many styles mixed in from start to finish on this album. And again, just a really pleasant album to throw in and listen to from front to back. So I've been kind of raving about this one a little bit over the past couple years. And even after I got this Half Speed Master, you know, I had another copy of this that I took and, and gave to a to a guy that works at a, a record store that I go to quite a bit. And I was just like, dude, you have to check this out. I was like, if you like it, you know, keep it. If, if you don't, you know, give it back to me and I'll find maybe someone who does like it. And he listened to it and he was like, no way am I giving you that thing back. <laughs> so uh, another great one right there. All right, if I'm we're talking about some desert island type of situations, you know, I definitely need my free jazz kind of thrown in there. So I'm kind of going with Sunra, Strange Strings. Another really good album here. Um, I've always defined this one in that it sounds like. Um, it sounds like someone snuck into a room with an orchestra that was warming up and everyone just kind of, you know, doing their little exercises and everything and just all kind of strange noises taking place. And someone just put a microphone in the middle of it and just recorded it. I mean, that, that's exactly what it sounds like. And to me, it's just one of the, the beautiful things that, that Sunra did. So uh, definitely one of my, my big likes right there. And then another element of jazz that I'm really fond of, and this album really kind of brings it out, is Lou Donaldson, Midnight Creeper. And here, you, you find yourself going into um, more of the, what I like to refer to kind of like the, the jazz, you know, with the psychedelic element kind of added in. Um, you know, this is the type of, type of music, when you throw this on and start listening to it, it's the type of song that you would say, if I was watching an Austin Powers movie, you know, and they were trying to do the theme and the music to kind of take you back to the, you know, 70s, or late 60s or 70s kind of psychedelic type of, you know, jazz and movement and all that kind of stuff, you know, stuff off of this album might be some of the things they would play in the background to bring that feel out. And I, I really, really love this album. So that would definitely be one on my list as well. All right. So those will be kind of the five records and the two CDs that I wanted to show, just because I wanted to kind of throw these in as well, because these are absolutely two of my favorites. And arguably, when you look at all the jazz I listen to, maybe outside of A Love Supreme and a couple other albums, I probably have listened to these more so than any other jazz album in my collection. And I know people aren't very fond of a lot of smooth jazz type of things that tends to get a lot of shun when you start talking about you know, Kenny G, Jim Horn, and, you know, all those kind of guys. But Rick Braun is absolutely one of my favorite jazz artists, without question. Matter of fact, I mean, as, as much as any, especially any jazz artist alive, I would love to see him in concert just about more so than any other living jazz artist that I can think of right now. Um, and again, he, he does the kind of typical smooth jazz thing that a lot of people just don't love, but... And there's, there, there's a kind of a funk or soul that that dude brings out in his playing that I just I just capture in, in some of the simplest type of smooth jazz stuff that he does. So this is his greatest hits album, uh, which again, I would so love if they would press this on vinyl. But songs like uh, Missing in Venice um, would be another good one on here. Uh, oh, Groovis, definitely an awesome one. Laura, I mean, those are just some great tracks on here. And then maybe stuff like One Love off of his other album. I mean, he has a lot of really good stuff, but yeah, when it comes to be a Desert Island, I definitely gonna have some Rick Braun in my in my jazz collection there because I'm, I'm a big fan of smooth jazz. I am. Um, I'm even, again, I know this is kind of sacrilegious to a lot of jazz lovers, but, you know, even Kenny G, I freaking love Kenny G. <laughs> and that's, that's something that most people don't, I guess. But then the other one that I would put on there would be 
this one right here, which is Free Jazz Posse. Another one I really wish they would uh, actually press on vinyl. Fanfare for the Noah Ages. And, and this, this is really that just, what I like to kind of define is just a, a pure free jazz. I mean, you, you throw it on from the first note and it's just guys all over the place doing their thing. But it, like in, in my mind, it's, it's coming together in a, in a beautiful way. Even though, again, most people that are typically listening to music for, you know, melodies that they can follow and rhythms and stuff like that. I mean, of course, you're not going to find any of that here. Um, but yeah, fantastic album. Love it to death. Uh, next to maybe Ascension by John Coltrane, probably my favorite free jazz album right here. Um, well, actually, a couple Coltrane things too, because Stellar Space is also great. But anyway, <laughs> this is supposed to be no Coltrane video. Uh, so yeah, that's definitely one I have to throw on the list there too. So anyway, uh, there you go, man. Again, congratulations on the the 200 subs. Uh, glad I you know stumbled across your channel here, kind of became a part of it, and uh, let me know what you think about my picks. And we will talk to you soon, BC. All right, take care, guys.